Hi, I'm Jimmy Clark and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at my Music Man Stingray 5 string bass. Um, I've had quite a few messages and emails um, about this, this bass and people just wondering what I've done to it. So I thought today will be the day that I take the mystery out of it and, um, and show you what I've done. So the bass I bought in 2000, early 2000, it's 14 years old, nearly 15. Um, I was 19 at the time. I got it from Academy of Sound in Norwich. I walked into the shop and saw the unbelievably gross colour and laughed really. I just thought it was disgusting. And then the more I looked at it, the more I was drawn to it. And then I thought I'm going to have to play it because if it sounds as funky as it looks, I could be onto a winner. Um, so I played it and an hour later I was still kind of playing away, a bit like Wayne in Wayne's World when he's on the Fender Stratocaster. And uh, I went back the next day with a Fender Jazz, I think a couple of Snickers bars, um, some chewing gum and anything else that I could find. And uh, she will be mine, she will be mine. And I got it, um, which is great. Um, and I've loved it ever since. It's been, been a bass that I've, it's been very well used and something that I've really treasured. And yeah, it's a really nice instrument. It's kind of, we've done a lot of journeying together, you could say. Um, so I put the, the EMGs, I've got the, the DC-40 pickups here. Um, in 2006, I took out the stock Music Man pickup and put one of these pickups in um, and just had it with a two-band EQ, which worked really well. I was working for um, a singer-songwriter at the time and I just wanted something that was a little bit smoother, a little bit less clunky than the kind of stock sound of the, of the Music Man. And this seemed to work really well. And then a year later, I decided to put another one in and I, I got a chisel. I got a chisel and I um, made a big hole in here and made a real mess. And uh, But found a real good place for both pickups and um, I was really chuffed with how it sounded. And then I got my dear friend Dave Roper, who's sadly no longer with us, um, to make this scratch plate. and. Um, and yeah, so that's that's the story of how that came about. I've had quite a few different preamps and things in here, but I've got it set up very uh, simple, really. Just we've got volume, volume, and tone. Um, so it's a simple setup for a very simple bass player. Um, and this knob here is just a bit wiggly. So that doesn't really do anything apart from wiggle. It's just there for decorative purposes. Um, and yeah, so let's, uh, let's, let's turn these things and see what this thing sounds like. So with everything on full, both pickups on, you get a nice kind of, well, bass sound, hopefully. So that's what it sounds like with both pickups and the tone on. If I take the tone off, um, that's what that sounds like. So just the front pickup on its own with the tone up. Um, classic kind of P bass front pickup sound. Um, nice and fat with a real bitey top end. This is great for rock. I tend to use this for rock because it really kind of cuts through in that kind of thing. It's great for kind of funk as well, um, like P basses are really, or anything that has a pickup kind of there um, tends to be. Um, so, and it sounds like this. Um, so it works great for that kind of that kind of thing, um, and with the tone off, 
you then just get rid of a lot of that attack and you're just left with the, the fatness, which is good. So, and then we go to the back pickup. So we switch the old uh, tone on full. So back pickup and tone on full. So that you get that classic back pickup kind of jackery sound. And then with the tone off. Uh, very kind of fusiony sound. Um, and then, yeah, that sound is actually also very good. Um, I'll often use that for playing up up the neck um, as it's as it as it's. Um, you get rid of the kind of the muddy muddiness um, that you would get from the front pickup, um, so it, it makes it a lot clearer, gives it more clarity. Um, would be the term I'm looking for. Um, so if you're just sort of noodling around, Right, so now let's schlep the bass and have a uh, have a listen to what it sounds like with. Uh, we'll start with both pickups. Um, so that's that's both pickups. If we just have the front pickup, you get that nice front pickup P bass kind of slap sound. Which, uh, which we all love. Um, and then the back pickup, you get that classic, um, I think it sounds a bit like the kind of cubicy uh, basses, if you remember those. I used to love those. Um, I don't know if you remember the Stu Ham slap, pop and tap videos from the early 90s. Um, I had volumes one and two. And um, yeah, loved that video. I loved, loved the sound of um, the cubicy bass. And this kind of reminds me a bit of that. Um, So that's pretty much my, my bass in a nutshell, really. Uh, I really like it. I, I find it a really usable instrument uh, with those kind of different sound combinations. I find I can turn up to most kind of uh, gigs or sessions and, and it's kind of got what I need, uh, which, is, which is good. Obviously being a freelance bass player, you need to be able to provide a good service to people and, um, and this helps me to do that. Um, also, I've I've been using the TC RH750 amps and the TC cabs, which I'm really enjoying. They've got some great features on them, so I'm going to be uh, doing some videos looking at that. And also my pedal board as well. I've got a few pedals that I use quite a lot and some that are just for fun. So I'll show you some of those soon as well. So 
Thanks for watching, and if you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down there, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Fan dabby dozy.